Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Matt Lestalia Show. Today, I've got something really special for you. It's uh, it's kind of that how I how I overcame being overweight, divorced, separated from my kids, uh, you know, overwhelmed and overstressed by work, trying to find my way in the world. How I how I went from this place to to a a position where I thrived more than I ever knew was possible. And I felt better than I had in six, seven years at that point. An absolutely incredible journey that I had always chalked up to one or two things. And and then when I thought about it, when I was reflecting back on this, I realized that the things I was chalking it up to were were just pieces of the pie. And so I've kind of got the the whole pie figured out now, and I wanted to share that with you guys. So so please let me do that uh, with you today. Let me share that story of, of how I I went from this this place of despair and, and hopelessness to a to kind of living consistently in a manner that is that was mentally and physically better than it had been in almost a decade. But before I go into before I go into that, I need I need to get some things clear. We need we need to we need to address some things. Um so what I want to do is I want I want to get very clear and precise about the the type of resilience that we talk about here and, and what I'm trying to foster. And so while I'm super happy and I'm really excited that we got our numbers up to 200, over 200 subscribers last week, which is an incredible feat. Like I'm mind blown at, at the response and the receptiveness of people and how we're continuing to grow every week. It's, it's incredible. It makes me so happy. And in response to that, my very next action is going to be, I'm going to try to thin the herd. <laughs> I don't, if you're here for the wrong reasons, then I don't want you here. I love the diversity of this audience. I love that you guys are from all over the world. That is so, that's so cool to me. I just, I absolutely love it. Now, the thing that, the the reason that we're all here, there's, there's an underpinning, right? With this level of diversification, there needs to be an underpinning, something, there's an alignment that brings us all together. And, and I want to make sure that that is clear and that is understood. And all of that revolves around your own personal responsibility into your level of resilience, your level of performance, your 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 success in life. What we do here, we don't blame external forces. We don't look like, yeah, sure, there's things out there that are in your way. I do not care about those. And I'm going to I'm going to share with you a personal story that kind of brought this to light for me in my personal life. And when I realized that this is what I, I needed to talk about this and I needed to make this clear into this business. So let me share this story with you with the disclaimer that there's going to be cursing. I can't actually tell this story without cursing, uh, without misquoting, <laughs> and 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 I, and I know my reaction to it is very visceral because I, it, it kind of drove me up a wall, and I felt like I was being unintentionally manipulated by somebody that I should be able to trust in a network of people I should be able to trust and that didn't happen. So let me share this with you and then I will I will tie it in, I promise, with my story of, of coming back and and how I was able to do that. Here's the deal. I have my I have some goddamn limits. Okay. Like I, I there are there is only a certain amount of your bullshit that I can deal with, whether you are my closest family member, whether you're blood, whether you're a, a brother or sister in arms. I have limits. I have expectations is really a better way to look at it. And that's the same thing with the resilience training. It's the same thing we do here. I have an expectation. I don't, this isn't passive. This isn't come in here and I, I I'm here to make you feel good. This is th this is a whole different animal. Okay, so if you're here just to be like, oh, that's a cool, neat idea. Cool. All right, now moving on, going on to the next place. Like, no, that's no, no. And and I will explain to you exactly 
what I'm talking about with this event that occurred, this personal life event. So, I have a buddy. I say that loosely. I have an acquaintance. I have a I have a, a dude that I worked with, a brother in arms, right? He was a supervisor and uh, of mine, and he eventually got kicked out. And I, I, I never really established a really good relationship with this guy. And and then I, you know, years go by. So this is, I met him, I, I served under him for six months. Like, this is right when I joined the Army. So this is, at this point, this is like 13 years ago. Uh, and so he... When he gets out, he, like, requests my friendship on Facebook. All good, whatever. That's great. And so we've been passive friends on Facebook. And then, um, you know, we had some personal tragedy. If you guys remember back, I had a, I did an episode about the my, my uh, he was another, he wasn't my supervisor, but he was senior to me when we were working together. And um, we ended up being the same rank, like, at the time that I got out and, and the rank that he was, I think he might have been promotable. Doesn't matter. Um, a, a buddy of mine, cohort, uh, committed suicide. After that, this dude that I worked with and got kicked out called me, uh, video chatted me on, uh, through Facebook and, and he just, he kind of needed to talk. You know, he, he saw that the podcast that I had put out and he was like, Hey man, that's really cool. And, uh, and so we got to catch up a little bit and it seemed really good for him cause he was kind of isolated. It seemed like, and, and it was just good to communicate and talk with, with somebody that he felt like a connection with. And I was like, cool. I'm glad that I could do that for you. That's, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Um, simple, easy things that like, I will absolutely be there for you. Um, and, and it's not just the simple, easy things. Right. And so homeboy, uh, a month or so later text messages me and says, Hey, uh, you want to, you want to watch me kick the shit out of this dude or something to that effect. And I was like, no, that's not, that's not what I want to do right now at all. Actually, I am more inclined. So like my natural inclination is if I see that is to ignore it is to absolutely blow it off. I pay it absolutely no mind. I don't like I'm more likely to just unfriend you, even if you're a close friend, if that's, if that's the life that you're, cause that's not the life that I lead. And I do, I do absolutely subscribe to the belief that you are the summation or the average of the five people or personalities or, uh, consciousness is that you spend your time around. And I, I use that generality because if you're, if you are reading books from the same author, like on a very frequent basis um, to the level that like that's a potential kind of a conversation. It's kind of a one-way conversation, but it's a conversation that you're receiving and intaking from this person's perspective more than other people. Like there was a while when Malcolm Gladwell was within my circle of five because I was listening to like audiobook after audiobook after audiobook of of homeboy and, and, and all of his stuff. And I was like, yeah, dude, he's definitely, um, and that's cool. Like that's actually a beautiful way to do that. Not to digress too far, but a beautiful way to adjust, to rapidly adjust your inner circle and to take advantage of the fact that you're the summation of the five people that you spend the most time with is to, is to inject yourself with stuff like that. And with the technology that we have now with auto audio books and just being able to buy books so rapidly and getting all this information, podcasts and all this stuff, like it's so easy to do that. Now, if you just want to surround yourself with those types, with a, with a particular mindset type, then you can find those people. You can go curate your list and, and focus that in to, you know, be your circle. Anyway, I bring that up because this dude's not in my circle. <laughs> And people like that are not in my circle. Uh, so regardless, he's a brother in arms, man. So I don't blow him off. I call him, I, you know, and I'm like, hey, dude, hey, dude, what's, what's going on? And he's just, he's flying off at the handle, right? And he's just dropping F-bombs. And he's like, this mother, I just hear him yelling out the door. Like, I'm not a fucking pussy. I'm not a pussy. And I'm like, dude, like. What's what what's happening? He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna kick my neighbor's ass. I'm like, all right, man. So, um, like you don't you don't need to, you don't need to do that. He's like, oh, I got a I got a fucking gun, and I'm like, I'm like, whoa, 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 hey man, let's pump the motherfucking brakes for a second. 
what are you about to do? And he's like, I'm going to fucking shoot this motherfucker. I'm like, no, you're not. Like, listen, man. I know you. We work together. Like, I served under you. Everyone that knows, that needs to know, everyone that matters, knows you're not a pussy, man. We know it. We know that. And it's okay. You don't have anything to prove to your neighbor. You know, and and, and he's, uh, he's just kind of like muttering and, and grunting. And, and eventually he hangs up. And I'm like, cool story. So I try to call him back. No answer. So I'm kind of sitting there spinning. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, whoa, I don't even really know where this dude lives. You know, I got a kind of a general idea-ish. What do I do with that? So there's a closed Facebook group on uh, on Facebook. And it's for people of our particular branch within the army. Uh, and and so I just reached out on there. And like I said, it's closed. They, they, they check who you are. They make sure that people know you. So only people from that community of the military can be a part of it. And... And I was like, hey, I don't know if anyone knows the homeboy, but he's, we, I need, I need some help, like some stuff's going down. I need y'all. And so eventually this dude reaches out and he's like, hey, I got, I called him, got a hold of him. And, and he didn't seem like he, he, like I got a hold of him and we talked, but he didn't seem like he wanted to talk. And I was like, yeah, no, I picked that up too. And I was like, all right, man, like that's, you know, what do you do? What do you do at this point? Like, I, I don't even. Like, uh, did, did he, was he fighting? Was it like, he's like, no, he wasn't like, you know, he just, it seemed like it had kind of died down enough where it was like, okay, we're okay. We made it through the thick of it. And then a week later, that dude who had reached out kind of following up on my request, that dude hits me up and he's like, Hey man, I think your buddy's uh, messed up. <laughs> it's like, great. <laughs> like what's going on? And so he sends me like a screenshot of the messages, and and so I was like, okay, I'll follow up with him. So I I I sent him a message I was like, hey man, like like you doing all right? And he's like, no. Cool, good, good. Got a response. That's wonderful. I like one words, <laughs> straight to the point. Uh, and I was like, hey, what can I do? Like how can I how can I help you? And nothing, no response. And some people. Might say, you know, like, okay, you know, like, he's stressed out, and you gotta understand, and and then, like, no, 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 I don't. No, I don't, because I haven't spoke, I spoke, I've spoken to you one time over the past, over a decade, and, and now I'm being put into a position where I like I, I'm being taken emotionally hostage by this guy, and I and really I'm being turned into like a hostage negotiator for his soul. And I get him. So like this is my, this is my thing. I will go down with you. I was just telling. I just talked about this on on the Matt and Adam show, and I, so I'm kind of gonna rehash what I said there. But this is this is the way that I feel about it. I will go down into the pit of despair i will go down there after you you'll be down you could be down there i could see you down there and i'm like i'm coming man i'm coming and 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 when i go i will i will call other people i will get i will get a band of brothers and i will pull you from the pit of despair back out right now if you go trouncing your way back down into the pit of despair I'm still not going to blow you off. I'm still going to walk back over. This time, I'm probably not going to walk down. I'm probably going to reach my hand out and be like, Hey man, do you want a hand? And you're going to say yeah, or you're going to say no. And that's, you say no, you 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 blow it off, you you don't care to respond, you don't care to interact. Like, that's on you. That's on, I got, I got. I've got motherfucking limits and I've got expectations. And if you, my expectation is if I'm going to help you, it's because you're willing, ready, and able to help yourself in some way, shape, or form. In any, like, and really the only way that I need you to be there for you is up here, is in your mind. That's it. That's the only place I need you to, to really give a shit is up there. And, and when I thought about that, because I was, I had a hard time. I got down and I was like, I'm not letting this dude hold me emotionally hostage. Like, if, if, if he does something stupid, 
I'm sorry. Like, I reached out. I connected. I got other people involved. I reached back out. I'm connecting. What What else do you want from me? Like, you want me to fly down there? I don't even know where I'm flying to, brother. And you won't even respond when I'm trying to, like, got it. Got it. Understood. Don't, don't come look into my corner anymore because I ain't going to be there. Not until you're ready to help yourself. Not until you're ready to put your hand back out and to grasp for something solid like me to help pull your ass out. You don't want to reach your hand out. That's on you. And that's the same exact way that I feel about this stuff right here. All of this resilience training that we do here. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. If you're not willing to do the work, I can't do the work for you. And I, it, it's, it's not even that I can't. I probably could because I'm that good. I will not because I don't care. I don't care about it. At the, I cannot allow myself to care more than you about you you need to be the person that cares the most about you that is the the fundamental reality of this situation of this show of this production of what we're doing here is yes i will help provide resilience strategies i will help provide tools i can even i can even help uh in a in, in consulting on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, or a one to few basis, I can even help to specifically integrate and get really practical uh, when it comes to the tools and implementation. None of it works if you're not in it. And that's, that's, that's the bottom line is, you know, Adam and I were talking about, you know, kind of showing up uh, you know, Adam Esser and I, you know, I, I referenced him earlier. He's, if you guys don't know, I do a, a co-hosted podcast, uh, together called the Matt and Adam show. Um, pretty good, good stuff. But Adam and I were talking and, and we, we were talking about, you know, just kind of seeing things through and, and even if it's like not necessarily the great idea or the best idea, but like just, just seeing it through and, and having the conviction to be like, yeah, I'm going to follow through with this. And, and that's the reason that we agreed to work together because when I looked at him, I, I saw that he was a person that had followed through. And when he looked at me, he saw that I was a person that had followed through. Like we don't we don't talk a big game. We act a big game. And that's what matters to both of us. We're both interested in similar things. There's commonality. And, but more importantly, we both know how important it is to act on the beliefs that we have. And so that was that being it's just like the 12 step program, right? Like acknowledging you have a problem is the first step, right? But after that is action, right? You, you acknowledging is great and acknowledging problems, uh, you know, can bring you here and can get you interested. But if you're walking away with nothing tangible to use then like, I don't want you here. If you're not willing to show up to, to turn this into something tangible, to, to change your life in a real meaningful way then just move on like i would be so happy to see the numbers cut in half cut in three quarters give me 10 people out of this 200 that really believe what's going on here that really know in their heart or hearts are like if i do if i follow these things if i if i take this to heart if i take these lessons to heart and i implement them in my own life i can have change like if you're not one of those if you're not one of those 10 I don't care if it's 10. It could be all 200 of you. That would be amazing. I just know it's not true. I know there's people out there that are like, yeah, cool. That's nice. This is nice to hear. I'm No, this is not a nice to have program. You know, like, uh, cool. Swing by when you want to. I just, you're not the people I'm talking to. I'm talking to the people that are here to act. That's the point. That's the premise is changing our lives by first acknowledging that we are the ones responsible for our lives. You can't. You can't make any meaningful change in your in your life if you don't see yourself as being the primary mover and shaker of of your life. If you think that the world is out to get you, there's what how could you take action? How could you take positive action in any meaningful way? Like how could you do it in an honest way to change your life if you believe that the world is out to get you and that no matter what you do, the man's just going to put his boot on your back. Like, how are you going to change your life? You're not. You're not. Unless you, you, you decide that you want to put your boot on somebody else's neck. 
you know, like, and you want to be the person doing it. Uh, whatever, whatever. So the reason that I wanted to tandem this in with, with my story, with my mess and how I, how I turned my mess into something more is because I feel, I feel like you had to earn it. Like if you're still here and you're ready to hear like kind of how I was able to, to, to turn the tables on that, on this situation, if you're still here, then, then you are, you're in the right state of mind. You are the right type of person who's really going to, to take this story and be able to use it as a kind of a blueprint, as a motivator to actually enact real change in your life today, not tomorrow. Go out and do something today. And so, okay, here it is. Let's get into it. Let's dive into it. Let's dive into my mess. So let's, let's, let me take you, I'm going to take you back in time. I want to go back to a date, February 4th, 2019. This was a pivotal day in my life. This is probably like the most meaningful day in my life when it came to change and changing the way that I saw myself and my level of control and impact in my own life through my own, through myself, right? Now, on this day, my state of existence. I'm going to give you like a, a sit rep, like a situation report, right? This is like the status of my life. I am, what is this? that was two years ago. So I was in my 30s. I was early, like 31, 32, 31, about to be 32, something like that. <laughs> and so I just, just left my 20s, freshly divorced, out of shape, haven't run in years, uh, was 20, 20 pounds ish overweight, exceeding past the, the army height and weight standards where they were needing to tape me. They needed to tape my neck and my stomach. Um, and it, and I was, I was pushing my limits on that tape because if you do, if you exceed, like if your neck's too small with how big your belly is, then you go into a fat boy program, the Army Body Composition Program, ABCP. Um, but it's it's the fat boy program to get you to get you to cut some weight. And and if you don't do that, if you don't if you don't show incremental weight loss over time, then bye bye. Thank you for your service. So I was I was fast tracking to that route, and, and this is crazy. This is from a guy where. Let me. I'm gonna rewind. Let's let's do a further flashback, right? Let's go back to 2013. Let's go to what was it? Let's say May, probably around May 2013. I am in a school in Arizona, um, a professional development school with all of my peers, and I'm actually by far the most junior soldier there. I don't know how I got into the course so early. Blessed, lucky, whatever you want to call it, but I made it in. Um, and while there, I was leading up to that event, to the schooling event. And while being there, I was running half marathons more days out of the week than I wasn't. And if I wasn't running a half marathon on the other days, it was probably like eight miles, 10 miles, something like that. You're like, oh, I just don't have the time. Got to, got to read, you know, got to study. Um, but it was very normal. I had, I just picked that up. And, and if you guys have followed the show, I've, I've talked about this before. So yes, I was running half marathons like all of the time. And while I was there, I also, um, I, I decided my buddy was like, Hey man, you want, um, you want to do this triathlon? They're doing a triathlon here. And I was like, yeah, man, I don't have a bike. And they're like, Oh, let's go rent one. Didn't have road bikes. They had mountain bikes. I'm like, cool. Let's get mountain bikes. I've never done it before. I don't care. Whatever. I know how to swim. I swam. I learned how to swim competitive, competitively, so that way I could get some German Armed Forces proficiency badge uh, way back in the day. And I've been swimming my whole life, and so like I, I know how to swim, and I know relatively how to swim competitively, and definitely well enough to be able to finish. Um, I didn't train. <laughs> I did nothing. I showed up, knocked it out. No training. Like that's that's the type of shape I was in. At the same time, 
I was competing in what's called the Iron NCO, the Iron Non Commission Office. It's like an Iron Man. Bunch of events, weightlifting, like three different weightlifting events. Um, there was a run, there's a sprint, there's a like a jump, I think. There was a ruck march. And basically, like I was very high up. I was I probably uh, won the sprint. I I kind of don't I don't want to say that. I I was highly competitive in the run in the sprint. I know that I won the ruck. I know I won the ruck. So the ruck for people that don't know is backpacking. It's walking with a backpack full of a set amount of weight. <laughs> That's what the army calls it. It's rucking. So there was a ruck march competition. You know whoever finishes first. It was the last event, and I had actually not done well in the weightlifting because I didn't really ever weightlift. Like it just wasn't wasn't my jam. Not since I was like a kid, since I was like twelve, and I was like, I'm gonna play professional football, and I was like, oh, I'm like five six, <laughs> five six white dude. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm athletic, but I'm not NFL athletic. So, um, but yeah, so uh, so I'm competing. I'm competing. Right? Don't do great on the weights, but I'm I, I I'm crushing it on the sprint, crushing it on the run, uh, crushing it on on the ruck, crushing it so much that like. I got, I was so exhausted when I got done. It was funny because they were like, you're going to win. The guy, this guy, I remember this, one of the instructors came out in his truck and drove up next to me. He was like, if you hurry the fuck up, <laughs> you're going to win. So hurry up. And I was like, okay. So I'm like moving. He's like, you're not moving fast enough. And eventually he like drives away shaking his head. And I was like, I'm not going to win. <laughs> I'm like, but I'm trying. And I won. I smoked everyone in the ruck by, by like, not it wasn't even close i i know that because i got to the end and i was looking around and i was so exhausted i was like i don't know where the end is like they had to come over and find me look you're still the only person here like you're supposed to be over there i'm like oh okay i was like how many people finished like nobody and i'm like all right cool i win (laughs) they're like i was like can you mark the time as if like you know a couple minutes ago because i've been here i've been done i just didn't know where the hell you guys were (laughs) but i ended up getting second freaking place which was sad, but um, is the state of j- all of that. I'm just saying to give you like a premise of like where I was on the top. And, and at that school, when I left, I was I graduated on the top of my class. So, you know, whether it be the the coordinating and leadership stuff or, you know, uh, the academia or the physical side of it, like I was crushing it. It was like life was my oyster and i was just i was in charge i was i was i was doing amazing so let's fast forward back to that fateful day 4th of february 2019 yes i remember it very vividly it was um i was in georgia and so it actually was really nice outside (laughs) because georgia's amazing it's warm um and it was crazy because so I got up and I felt like crap and and I knew that I needed to change right because I so I you know I was separated from my kids like I'm seeing them like every other weekend and this goes from obviously living with them full time you know and, and having great relationships with them so going from that to, to barely being with my kids working in a shop in a, in an office where I was like uh, I was one man there for more time than I than anything else. I was working alone in a shop that was supposed to have five people, five additional people in it, six total people. Four of those additional people were all supposed to be my seniors. You know, I was a senior enlisted guy, but I was supposed to have three. Or no, I guess it was four additional people, three officers, one dude that would have been my subordinate if I was fully manned. But I wasn't. Rock and solo. So th- spread out kind of thin, and it was in an area where, like, I wasn't, I was new to me, and so I, there was a big learning curve, and so I was like trying to learn, trying to work, and all this stuff. So I'm dealing with this stress, the stress from the divorce, the the separation from the kids, and 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 the stress from the job, and the, and I had a back injury, which is what led to me being out of shape and and not being able to run and and perform physically in the way that I was used to to maintain that type of proficiency. And so, it's you know what happened on the fourth of February to to change it. What well, was a series of things? And so, and it started with feeling like crap, right? And so I got up and I was like, oh man, I just don't feel good. And I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to try to run and sweat this out because I don't want to get sick. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to run this out. 
And, and I did. Uh, I ran for the first time in that kind of manner, like recreationally for fun fitness. Um, and it was probably like two or three miles, maybe maybe it was even a mile and a half. Doesn't really matter. I, I, the thing is, I had to get up. I had to put my shoes on. I had in my head, I was like, I gotta get in the car and I gotta drive to this park and I'm gonna go for a run. It wasn't a good, I didn't live in a great neighborhood to like go run around. So it was, I needed to go drive to a park. So all of that took like this, these little bits of motivation. Like, I gotta get my shoes on. I gotta, and, it was, and I knew me well enough at that point where like, I have to do less thinking. Once I get out there, once I get my shoes on and I'm in the car, I'm good to go, right? Like, I just, I gotta get my shoes on. I gotta get in the car. And so I did that. Got my shoes on, got in the car, rolling out. So I go there and I run and I'm like, ah, oh, that's great. But like, and I can't run anymore because it hurts. My back's just aching in pain. And, and but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not done. Like, I want to do more. I just can't do more of this. And I was like, well, oh, let's go to the gym. You know, like, there's no reason not to. It was, I think it was, I forget what day is the week it was. It was, it was, we had it off and we had it off for a specific reason that if you don't already know by the date, um, I will inform you later. So I, we were off of work. It was probably a Monday. I think it had to have been a Monday, which is another indicator of what was going on. So it was a Monday. We were off of work and I was like, oh, let's just go to the gym. And not, not too many people go to the gym, especially at this time uh, on on an off day. So let me go in. So I did. I went in and, and, and I didn't do anything crazy. I was like, I went in there and I was like, what are the things I'm going to do? Because like I said, I told you, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a gym rat. I didn't lift. It's not like really my jam. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm here. I want to do something like, well, let's make it easy. Let's make it simple. Stuff that you really want to do to to get the win, right? And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, I enjoy doing bench press, I, you know, like, like any other freaking super basic dude that's gonna work out like i'm gonna do bench press and i'm gonna do curls i'm gonna do tricep pull downs and that's like that's like all i did so i did that and i did like three sets of 10 at each of those and i was like cool but like each time i went through and i got done i got done with like an exercise i was like oh there's like a win you know and i like and i ran before this so like i'm way better than than like where i normally am because and where most people are because that's a uh, you silly phone. See, I was so good, guys. I'm so sorry. And it's freaking Verizon, like Verizon rewards. Thanks, buddy. No one cares. So, uh, so yeah, like I said, like, like, oh man, like who, who goes for a run and lifts? You know, like this is the type of stuff that like motivates me. Like who goes for a run and lifts? And I was like, well, who goes for a run and lifts and hits the steam room? in the same day. I'm like, well, this guy's about to. And so I went over and I hit the steam room. And while I was in there, I remember like, this was the introduction into like the next year long process of, uh, of mind games that I got to play with myself. And, and, and so I, so I, I you know, I, I got it. just like, I'm in there. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, how long can I go? And this is developed over, like I said, over a year. It's like, how long can I go without looking at the time, without looking at my watch? How long can I go without like listening to anything? How long can I keep like rhythmic breathing up and running? Like, like I would try to do, uh, you know, like six, six, seven seconds in, like a like a seven second inhale, and then hold for four seconds, and a seven second exhale, and and hold for four seconds. And how long can I do that for? And, you know, in the first couple of times, I was like, oh, my God, I've been doing this for so long. And I look and I'm like, oh, it's been like 20 seconds. That's great. <laughs> it's not very great. So, um, but, yeah, there's all of these different ways to, like, push myself while I'm in, you know. And then, and but while I was there, the very first time, I was like, oh, you know what I got to do on top of this? I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out and I'm going to do a cold shower. I'm going to do as cold water as I can get. And I'm going to pour it all over me. So, I like, and as soon as I had these th this thought, like, when I had the thought to go to the steam room, I was like, no thinking, go to the steam room. You know, and it was the same thing when I got done with the run. When I got done with the run, I was like, oh, I should lift weights. It's like, no thinking, go go work out. And I was like, no thinking, go to the steam room. No thinking, hit the cold shower. And I was, and, and, and when I'm in there, I'm like, oh, I'm really, like, it's super uncomfortable and it's painful. And like, and you guys have heard me talk about it before if you've listened to the shows in the past, but like, it's because it's hard. That's why you do it. It's not why I was doing it then. It was, it was like, it was a challenge. It was crazy. It was this idea. Let me just roll with it. And I know that it's good. And so, you know, and you could probably, 
you could probably ascertain that it's good that there's good in in the running and there's good in the working out and there's good even in the steam room you're like what's the good in the cold shower stuff and i'll be honest i'm gonna be completely honest with you man ah uh, probably nothing there's probably nothing tangibly like physically good that happens when you do that like where you're like oh my body's like rejuvenating it's it rapidly contracts the muscles which makes them heal faster <laughs> probably none of that and, and i'm not i'm not saying that I even read stuff that said that it might be true and I'm challenging it. I'm saying I never looked into it because I don't care. I don't do it for that type of health benefit. I do it for a mental health benefit. I do it because it's a great way to like push myself, to push my brain, to push my mind in a way that I'm like, I, I, when I built this into a regimen and I was doing this on the regular, like my ability to do everything better was so much easier. Like my ability to to clearly articulate my opinions that counter that of senior leadership improved like my confidence improved my willingness to communicate and to and to, and to do hard things improved because i was pushing myself because i felt good and like a lot of this is a result of like you know i'm physically feeling better because i'm doing physical things more and i'm building this confidence because like i'm pushing myself i'm challenging myself and i'm seeing that i can do it so it's creating the shift in my mind where i'm like i can do hard things and i can do them well and then on top of all of that i don't even think i mentioned it i didn't eat that day on this fateful 4th of february day i didn't even eat this day until like 6 p.m and you know what i kept on doing i kept not eating until like my early days of eating would be like 4 30 and this was so this went from 4th of february until um around august time frame that i did this and i ended up cutting like 15 no i ended up cutting like 25 or 30 pounds like i went below the weight i was at when i was in 2013 like i dropped really low but i didn't look it wasn't like fledgling like i wasn't i it was very lean very cut um and it was really cool man like it was incredible and i felt amazing and the food thing was just another challenge on top of it and that's that's the part that i was getting at before is that's what i thought was the key to all of this i thought it was the eating and i was like man that's that's a really powerful fasting tool i'm like no no man that's not what it was I was like, oh, it's the working out. It's like the consistency. Like, yeah, man. No, that's not what it was. <laughs> it's got to be the steam room and the shower. Like that, that mixture right there. It, it, you know, oh, it's got to be, you know what? It's got to be all of it. It's got to be that whole regimen. You it, take that regimen, you export it to anybody's life, and they're going to feel the way that I felt. Nah, man, that's not what I'm saying. That is not, that's not it. Now, I'm not saying that if you did that, if you took on a regimen like that, that you would that you would not receive benefit. You probably would. I don't imagine that I'm my body is so inherently and intrinsically different from yours that if you took on the same exact physical regimen plan that I took on, that you would receive no benefit or it would be awful for you or it would be harmful to you. I don't think so. Now, my fast, the one thing that I, I would say is like, I would never, and I told this to anyone, when people were like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're crushing it right now. Like, people were acknowledging this. And I was like, yeah, man. Um, well, I only eat like once a day. And on top of that, what I was eating, so this is the way, they'll be completely transparent about the food stuff. So I wouldn't eat typically until about 6, 6.30 at night. And I would only eat, I would have like a four hour eating window. And so I would cook myself like a heaping plate, like a big one. So if you get like the, like a dinner sets, whatever from Walmart or whatever. They have the two different plates. They have like the little salad plate and they got the big plates. I would have the big plate and this thing would be a pile of food and there would be no carbs. I was full on keto for my dinner meal, which was, you know, probably 80, 85% of my caloric intake would have been there. Now I was drinking coffee in the morning and I was having creamer with it. So people are like, that's not intermittent fasting. All right, bro. I didn't consume food for 20 hours every single day. So like, okay, <laughs> I consume calories for my creamer, but 
I uh, so so I would eat, and that's that's what I would. Eat. So it would be this heaping load of vegetables. It'd be like zucchini and squash and broccoli and cauliflower and Brussels sprouts and green beans, um, and, and and it just smothered in butter. And then I would have like a big old side of of shrimp or chicken or salmon. Um, you know, as, and asparagus is another veggie that I'd rotate in. I'd like all of these foods and just kind of rotating these through. Uh, and, and for me, I was, I was highly struggling also. Like this is something I didn't even mention was, was financially, you know, I was, I was decently, I had just been promoted to Sergeant first class. It's a decent rank. It's still enlisted, not making a ton of money, definitely enough to be comfortable until you get divorced and your wife takes your ex-wife takes half of your paycheck. And then I'm going on half this paycheck trying to support my trying to afford an apartment trying to afford my car trying to afford the monthly bills you know <laughs> trying to afford when the kids come over and i still need to pay for them you know twice a month for for full weekends you know for all three of my kids to be able to eat stuff that's not crap you know and so i i found i found this way this is actually this is very for for people that are looking for a uh that, that make complaints about money and food and stuff like that. I will say for me, now it's just one person, I fully acknowledge, but for me, when I was struggling, so all of you single dudes and chicks out there, they're like, I can't afford to eat healthy, blah, 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 blah. I call you on your BS. One, intermittently fast because it's good for you and it's good for your wallet. <laughs> you know how you save money on eating? Don't eat. <laughs> lessons from matt listalia <laughs> but but for real intermittently fast i felt amazing doing this and i was and it opened up my budget my my uh food budget in a way where i could i didn't need to buy as much because i wasn't i was only eating once a day and and so i didn't <laughs> I'm like veering back and forth or all around here. Um, but I was only eating once a day. And so like I could afford to buy stuff that was good for me then. And I will say that I was able to take like 20 bucks. I could probably spend 20 bucks at the store and have enough food for myself for four days with like heaping amounts of food on this plate every dinner. Now, like I said, if you intermittently fast, you could probably eat two times a day. Um, and you know, to each their own. I'm saying that I was able to spend 20, 20 bucks to last me four days with salmon, chicken, uh, you know, a heaping load of veggies, smothered in butter, seasoned, seasoned well. Um, and that, that was my jam, man. I would, I'd cook, I'd take half the stuff that I bought and I'd cook it. And then I would have enough for leftovers for the next day. And then I'd take the other half of the stuff that I bought and I'd cook it and I'd have leftovers for the next day. And I'd have a four day essentially ritual there. Um, and then, you know, I, I was getting coffee and I was getting creamer and I was getting, I, and so after dinner I'd went non-keto, like I said, 80, 85% of my caloric intake was keto. So then I, I would do that straight up. I'd have like chips and I'd have beer. <laughs> and but just like a beer i i had no intention uh, of of drinking i kind of was like losing my taste for drinking at that point and that's kind of started a big change where eventually i just it's not that i don't drink now it's i just barely ever drink like it's definitely not even like a weekly thing in the summer is more so because i like grilling and i like to have a beer in my hand that's just the habit thing but like Maybe once a week I'll have a beer or a couple of beers in a night. And that's that's like maxing out. That's that's probably way more frequent than it actually happens. Uh, which is like what I used to tell the doctors in the army when I'd go in. Like, oh, yeah, I drink like one beer a month. And they're like, oh, you know how to answer those questions, those survey questions perfectly to make it not look like you're an alcoholic. I'm like, yep, <laughs> that is correct. I do know. <laughs> so now there, there's 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 an interesting tidbit here that I didn't share with you, right? So you might think that all of a sudden I got this motivation, this internal drive to change my life on this fateful day on the 4th of February. That's not true. 
<laughs> I had a lot of this stuff kind of lingering around in my head. I'd been listening to Rogan and some of the some of the people that doctors and stuff that he brought on about intermittent fasting. I had always been interested in intermittent fasting, and so there was an idea that had been like sitting dormant in the back of my mind. Yes, um, I I've. I figured out, you know, what kind of a gym workout schedule when I at my previous duty station, um, and it even picked up a, a decent workout regimen at the beginning when I was when I was uh, showed up, you know, as far as like the quick lifting and stuff like that. So I kind of had an idea of where I could go and and where how the machines were set up and kind of the schedule for the gym and stuff like. That. So I, I I had I had a good framework there, um, but all of that said, it took. I knew all of that for a long time and I, and I wasn't crushing it the way I was starting on the 4th of February. So what happened on the 4th of February? 4th of February is the day after the 3rd of February. I know it's groundbreaking. This is what we do here. We bring you groundbreaking madness. <laughs> the 3rd of February, 2019 was the Super Bowl, friends. That is the top game for the NFL in the United States. And I don't even remember who played. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is I sat at home alone drinking a lot because that was before I switched to the non-drinking kind of lifestyle. And I was hung over the next day. Like not feeling good. I told you when I got up and I felt like I was sick and I didn't feel very well. It wasn't just because I was feeling sick. That's because I was hung the crap over. <laughs> and so my life changed forever. My life will never be the same. There was like, there. this is so crazy to think about. There was my life before the 4th of February, 2019. And then there's my life afterwards. And there too, like you couldn't look at that and be like, that's the same dude. Like, if it was described to you what daily life looked like, even now for me, where I don't do 20-hour inter intermittent fasting. I do intermittent fasting still. I don't do 20 hours. And I fell off intermittent fasting, and I got back on, and, you know, I went to strict no drinking at all. Not because I was, like, adamant against it. It just didn't happen to, like, okay, let's incorporate it back in a little bit. You know, just here and there for fun. Um, but you you could not look at these two people, these two states of existence, like, yep, same dude. Definitely same dude. No. It, it is night and day difference. Crazy, crazy, crazy difference. And and it was all because of being hungover. <laughs> that was like the that was like the, the motivational thing where I got up and I was like, oh I just and 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 it really like it wasn't this crazy like I'm gonna sit down and, and I'm going to use these resilience hooks. At that point, I had been uh, a resilience trainer for years. It wasn't some like immaculate plan where I was like, I'm going to change my life by doing these things. Like that day, I, when, when I was hungover, I didn't have in my head that I was going to intermittently fast. I didn't have in my head that I was going to steam room and shower and do the cold showers. I didn't have in my head that I was going to go to the gym. I got up. I felt awful. And I was like, I need to sweat this out. I'm going to go. I'm going to run. Because I remember even then I still had the muscle memory that like I could go run and sweat it out. And that would help a lot. And so that's what I'm going to do. And when I got out there, then it was like, then, like I said, it was just, it was every little thing. As I walked through that whole procedure, it was the little things. It was the little motivational things. It was like, and, and, and finding the things specifically jumping on the things that I know that motivate me, the things that I know that, that get me to take action. So I'm not, I wasn't going to use a gym day that day that's like, oh, this is kind of boring and I don't really like leg day. Like, I don't care. I don't need to make a justification for anyone like, oh, leg day matters and you're an upper body bitch. Like, okay, cool. Got it. Like, that's not true, generally speaking. And, and I don't care. It doesn't matter because it's what gets you in the door. What gets action happening? And that's what I did that day is I found immediately I knew I didn't even go looking for it. I was like, that's what I want to do. I'm going to do it. No, and like I said, no thinking. No, the more I think, the more my brain, my brain's got a chance to be like, mm, I mean, like you went for a run, man. When's the last time you went for a run? That's amazing. You did good. Go home, chill out. And you know what you do when you chill out? You eat. You know what you do when you eat? You drink, you know? And so like that was, that was my lifestyle. 
and it was just like I had these tiny little glimpses of motivation. Like, oh, you could go to the gym. Like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym. And I'm at the gym. Like, oh, you could go, you could go to the steam room. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to the steam room. Like, and so it was just this and this and this. And it was just the little things. And like, this excites me. This excites me. This excites me. That sounds hard and crazy. Okay, let's just do it. Don't think about it. Like, oh, that's gonna be awful. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's go in the cold shower. <laughs> and so, so that's. I mean, the point is that. You don't need so, some great, big, immaculate plan. Like, use what you know and leverage what you know in a way that, that benefits you. You know, I took the little things that I had learned over the years, and I, I and they, they fell into place that day, all spurred into action by by being hungover and wanting to, to feel better. And, you know, during the day while I was going through it, I was like, dude, I haven't I remember being at the gym. I was like, man, I haven't eaten a day. I was like, oh, I've been wanting to intermittently fast. And I, and I remember things like, I don't want to eat. And that's when I had the thought. I was like, I, didn't, I haven't eaten. I was like, I don't want to eat. I still felt ugh, sick from being hungover. I was like, well, this seems like a great... I, I, my, I, my exact... I was like, this seems like a great day to start intermittent fasting. Let's give it a shot. And so I didn't feel hungry until dinner. So it was like I accidentally cheated my way into the best lifestyle that I ever had. The most healthy uh, lifestyle that I ever had through a hangover. <laughs> So take that for what it's worth. I, I think that I think that y'all get it. And I think the point is that you know you can you can get huge life changing victories. You can change your entire life in a day, you know, if if you're if you put yourself in a position to do so. If you if you are willing to to listen to those healthy urges and callings and and are able to turn your mind off and just say yep i'm doing it like i'm not thinking like i'm just gonna go do it i will i will reason this out afterwards you know and so so that's that's kind of what i wanted to get to that's kind of like how i got to where i wanted to be and how i've been living a different life from that day forward and that's what I want to share with you guys, man. And so, so if you're still here, like I said, I'm so glad that, that like you're here and you made the cut. And if all those people that left, like thank goodness because we don't need them. So thank y'all so much. I really appreciate the fact that you're here. If, if if you found value in this, please like it. Please please subscribe. And I will see you guys here again next time for another episode on the Mavis Show.